Welcome back to Fusion 360 for Woodworkers. We're continuing the build out of our bookcase and today it's the turn of those dovetails. That sounds interesting, stick around. So today's lesson is all about dovetails and we're going to walk through a technique of how you can quickly create dovetails, blind dovetails, and through dovetails that will resize and recalculate as we change the dimensions of our cupboard. Sounds tricky, it's not as hard as you think and we'll break it down step by step. Before we start, quick update on Fusion Friday. If you remember, last lesson I spoke about an idea of creating a library of quick access Fusion related things. Could be tools, commands, tips, tricks, how to's, answering your questions. I decided to go ahead and do that and it went live last Friday so I'll put a link up to the playlist for that so dip in and out of that. If you're not a subscriber subscribe and click the notification so you don't miss anything. So if you're a woodworker who's trying to learn Fusion 360 that series is for you. Now let's get back to this conversation and crack on with these dovetails. So here's our bookcase looking really good and today we're going to turn our attention to that small drawer that we made last time. So let's go ahead and isolate that. Come up to your tree menu on the left hand side here, right click on small drawer, come down to the very bottom and click isolate. And that's now turned off everything else inside that bookcase so we can just focus on this small drawer. As we know the drawer is made up of a number of components. I've got my front, I've got my right, I've got my left, I've got my back and I've got my bottom inside my drawer. Now when you've got a drawer that's pretty square, as this one is, it can be quite easy to get yourself lost and confused and put your dovetails on the wrong face. And you've only got to spin it around a few times and you've no idea what's up or down. Now Fusion has a trick up its sleeve that we've not looked at yet. It's got a colour coding type system. If we come up to the inspect command at the top, highlight the menu and come right down to the bottom, component, colour, cycling, toggle applies different colours to each component to help differentiate between components. Now that can be really useful when you're doing something like dovetails because it's very easy to start to work on the wrong side and then boy have you got problems. Well not problems but it's frustrating. So highlight that, click on it and straight away you can see it colour codes everything. Garish colours, what I can quickly see and I've got this blue drawer here and I've got this blue sign over here, that's a small drawer front. I've got this pinky one which is the left, I've got this purpley one which is the right side, I've got the sort of orangey dirty colour thing here at the back and I've got the yellow base here for the bottom. So I now know quickly and easily that the blue one is my front panel so therefore I'm working on the purple and the pink ones and that can be quite useful I think. You'll also notice just at the bottom here that everything else is colour coded. So if you've done some work on the right hand side, not only is it colour coded the panel, but you can see down here it's colour coded some of these key areas as well. So for example, that purple one there is where we did the combine command, that purple one there is where we extruded that draw. So you can quickly see not only the panel and its name and its position in the component tree, but any history, anything that you've done on that over time. And that can be quite useful as well. But we're just going to use it to say, hey, I'm working on a pink and a purple. If it's any other colour, I'm doing it wrong. So we're going to start our dovetails on this panel here, this purpley panel. So I'm just going to go ahead and isolate everything that I don't need. So I'm just working on the one panel and we're going to come up and we're going to hit the create sketch. Everything in Fusion starts with a sketch. I want to sketch on this face here, the outside face of this side panel. So just click on that and as always we'll enter the sketch command. Now all I'm going to do is to sketch out a dovetail shape. So I'm going to come up to my line tool up here, we've used that before, creates lines and arcs, click on that. And I'm going to snap into this very edge here. See my cursor goes to a cross, snap into there, come up to any old random shape and I'm going to create a big massive dovetail. There you go, look at that. So we've now created our first dovetail. Obviously it's the wrong size, it's the wrong shape, it's in the wrong position and there's not enough of them. 
Now the first thing I want to look at is its width. Now this width has got to be the same as the stock thickness. Makes perfect sense on a dovetail, right? So come up to the sketch dimensions, create sketch dimensions for a sketch geometries. Click on that. Click on one end of your dovetail here. I'm just picking up that little white blob. Click that. And click the other end of your dovetail up here, that white blob. Pull the mouse up. And I'm just going to type into here, stop thickness. Bang. Now that's at the right size. The next thing I want to say is where do I want to position this? Well, I want to position this in the middle of the board. And if I can put a dovetail in the center, I can build out from that center point for the remaining dovetails. So how am I going to put that in the middle of the board, you ask? Press escape to come out of the dimensioning tool. I'm going to use a constraint. Now we've used constraints before. We use this collinear constraint an awful lot when we built the draw. And remember, a constraint connects one object to another object. And we have a variety of ways of doing that. I want to bring your attention to this constraint, symmetry. Constraints two or more objects so they are symmetrical, identical to each other in relationship to a common axis. So, if I can put an axis on here that's at the sense point of the panel, I can make my dovetail symmetrical to that axis. Makes sense? I'm now going to introduce you to something called construction lines. Now a construction line is no more than a marking outline and if you think about when you're in the workshop and you're creating something, very often you'll take your rule, you'll take your pencil and you just sketch a line and use it for reference so you can line up something else. That's exactly what a construction line is, it's just a reference line that has no significance in the final project or the final joinery, we just use it to help us to create and measure something out. So let's create a construction line that we can use here. A construction line is just another line that's a construction line. So come back up to your line tool here and then bring your cross, bring your cursor back into the edge again until it goes to that blue cross and slide down that edge until it goes to a triangle. See that? Triangle. Once you've got a triangle, that's showing you that you're at the center point of that edge. Click once, come to the other end, snap into the edge, come down, snap into the triangle and then press escape to come out. So we've now got a line that's dividing up my draw side. Now I don't want this line to do anything, it's just a reference line. So I want to tell Fusion, hey ignore that line, it's purely for me when I'm measuring things out. So I highlight the line, so it goes blue, there, and I come up to this sketch palette at the side. And in here you've got this command that says construction. Highlight the little thing at the end, you see that? Click. And straight away my line now goes blue and it's dotted. That is now a construction line, so Fusion will ignore it, but we can use it in our layout. So, I now want to tell Fusion that I want my dovetail to be centered to that line. So that's where the symmetry constraint comes in. Let's click on that. Click the first slopey line of my dovetail there, select the second slopey line of my dovetail there, and then select that construction line. And watch what happens to my dovetail. Bang. It now centers itself. Escape to come out of my constraint command. Now not only has that centered it, it's actually made these sides so they'll always be the same. So as I drag one up and down and around, you can see the other one moves as well in relationship to it. So the next thing is how long do I want to make my dovetail? Now the way that we draw dovetails, we sketch it once and we use that sketch many, many, many times. So I want a very, very simple way of changing my mind. If I put more dovetails in, I may want to change the length of them. If I use a different type of material, I may want something more ornate, it looks like fine furniture. So I want to quickly be able to change the length of this by using a single parameter. So no surprises, we're going to define a parameter. Come to modify, and underneath modify, at the very end, you'll see a change parameters. And this menu is one we've seen many, many times. So I can access this menu from my sketch panel or my design panel. So let's go ahead and click the plus mark. And let's call this dove, oops, dove tail length. It's going to be millimeters. And let's just start off with a random number of 20. Because we can change that. The comment, this is the length of the dove tail. Okay, so I've now got a dovetail length. So I want to come in with my sketch dimension tool, 
pick on that line, drag it out, and now I can just type into there, dovetail length return. And that will now create a dovetail that's 20 millimeters. Press escape to come out of the dimensioning tool. Do you see how my slopey sides have now crossed over? Just grab one of those back things and just put the shape of your dovetail back in again. Not necessary, but I just like to be able to visualize what I'm doing as I go through. Now you can see that my slopes aren't constrained, they're still free to move around. The thing that's going to constrain those is the angle. Now an angle, again in the dovetail, is something you could well want to change. You may want a steeper angle if it's a soft wood, a shallower angle if it's a hard wood. So let's define a parameter that's going to set this angle. Back into modify, back into change parameters, use a parameter, and let's call this one dovetail angle. This is the angle of the dovetail. Cool. Now I don't want this to be in millimeters, I want this to be an angle and I want it to be in degrees. So all you do, click on the blue up and down arrows here, it gives you this menu of all sorts of things that you can select. Only thing I care about is angle and its degrees. And now I can type in there, we'll go for an eight degree angle just for kicks, bang. Okay, now I can come back in with my sketch dimensioning tool and let's just zoom in and look at this. So let's set the angle, come in, select your sketch dimension tool again, highlight the blue slopey one, highlight the construction line and drag out to the left. And you can see that's giving me that angle there. Now I can type in there, dovetail angle. Bang, and that's now set that to eight degrees and you can see that here. But look at that, because I constrained that to be symmetrical, it's also set the angle of the other one, which is fantastic. Escape that. So we've actually got a dovetail now that's fully constrained and it's fully constrained with parameters. So as the parameters change, we can change the size of our dovetail. So let's look at that. Come back into the change parameters. Actually, I now don't want my dovetail to be 20 millimeters. I want that to be ooh, 10 millimeters. Watch my sketch. Bang. You see that's changed now to 10 millimeters. Command Z to undo that. Let's come in. Let's say, actually, I want a different angle now. I want something steeper than six degrees. I want, sorry, eight degrees. I want a six degree angle. Bang. That's now changed to six degrees. And you can see that's a much shallower angle, fantastic for hardwood. Control Z, just undo that change. So we now have a sketch of a dovetail that's fully constrained with parameters and we know we can change that by changing the parameters. Now this is the, the front side of the board. I want to do the same thing here at the back side of the board. But I can't be bothered re-sketching that, we've already sketched it. So wouldn't it be great if I could take that sketch and put it the other way around on the back of the board? The good news is that we can. Now the command that we're going to use is a mirror command. Mirrors are selected sketch curves about a selected sketch line. Select the curves to mirror then select the line to mirror about. So although it uses the word curves, we can use lines in that, ignore the word curves. So I can select these one, two, three lines, mirror around some center point and it will turn up over here. So let's put in a center point and guess what we're going to use? construction line. So select my line tool, come to the top edge, slide along till I get my triangle, click once, slide to my bottom edge, slide along till I get my triangle, click once, press escape. Select the line so it goes blue, over to construction, bang. I've now got a construction line in the center of that board. Let's go and select that mirror command. So the create menu, come down, mirror. Now here's your mirror line menu. What do you want to mirror and what do you want to mirror it around the mirror line? So let's select that, that, and that. So I've selected that sketch that we've made. Now I want to mirror it through that center point. Now watch the right hand side of the board, bang. It's now put the sketch over here, which is perfect, okay. So you can see I've now got a fully constrained sketch. Now this sketch is constrained by these parameters over here. So if we were to come back to our change parameters, 
and um, try and get this in the right place. I'm going to change the, the length from 20 millimeters to something obvious like 40 millimeters. Now watch the sketch on the right hand side. You see that's changed? So because this is just a mirror of this sketch, whenever this sketch changes, this one will change as well. So we've now got our dovetail on both ends of the board and it all works, it all changes by those parameters, which is absolutely whizzy. Control and Z to undo that. Okay, I've finished, I've sketched it. I never have to sketch another dovetail as long as I live, so finish the sketch. What I now want to do is to extrude these through my board to actually cut out the dovetails. So, come into the extrude command. Remember, adds depth to a closed sketch profile or plane of face. So, we've got that, we've got a closed sketch profile. I'm going to select that one. And I'm going to select that one at the same time. Coming up here, I want to cut out. And I want to cut out to an object. And the object we're going to cut out to is the back of our panel. Okay, so now I have dovetails in my board. Just going to bring back in the front and the back to show you something. Now in our model, this back panel here is through dovetails, but this front panel here is blind dovetails. So at the moment you can see I've got a through dovetail. To turn this into a blind dovetail, that's no harder than moving the front face, the edge of this purple board, back by an amount. Let me show you. Let me just turn off the uh, front of the drawer and the back of the drawer. And I'm just going to use a push pull, or I could use an offset or an extrude. Press pull up here, modifies a selected geometry using offset, perfect. I select that face and I select that face. And I'm going to push that back. Now I actually want to use a parameter to push this back. Now we already got a parameter that's called stock thickness. So if I was to move that by stock thickness, obviously that's going to take it all the way back uh, to the bottom of the dovetail, which I don't want. So I want to divide that stock thickness by six. So I will take it back by a, a sixth of the stock thickness. Okay, and now when I bring back in my front and I bring back in my back, you can now see I've got that offset and that gives me the blind dovetail at the front but the one at the back is still a through dovetail. So that's pretty useful, I think. Okay, so let's turn our front off again and let's turn the back off again. We don't need those just yet. Now the next thing I want to do is to duplicate this up and down the board. So the first thing I want to do is say, well, how many dovetails do I want? Well, that's probably another parameter I may want to change. So let's create a dovetail number parameter. Let's come into here create a user parameter and let's call this dove tail quantity. This is the number of dove tails. Now I don't want that in millimeters, I just want a number, I want a number of five, but it's not five millimeters. So let's come in and the very, very top of our menu, we've got no units. Click on no units, look at that, happy days. So I've now got a dovetail quantity that's five, just five, number of dovetails. Okay, so what we now need to do is to duplicate this. I'm going to use the pattern tool. Now remember, we use the pattern tool when we looked at those internal panels, we pattern those across. And it's the same technique, but now I want to pattern the dovetail. Now when you cut something out of a board in the way that we just did with those dovetails, it creates in Fusion what's known as a feature. And features are something that we can pattern. So let's open the pattern tool and have a look at that technique. So pattern, if you remember, was under the create command. Create, pattern, and remember we had three different types. We had pattern on a path, had a circular pattern, and a rectangular pattern. Now a rectangular pattern creates a grid of things for you. So you can create one pattern and you can do multiple things. Think of something like a multifunction top, the Festool MFT top, that's full of a grid of 20 millimeter holes. That would be a rectangular pattern. You can create a circular pattern. Um, think of a circle as a gear wheel, and all the different teeth on a gear wheel are a pattern around a circle. Think on terms of a path, which is the one we used last time. That just creates a repeatable pattern of a feature 
on a set path. That's exactly what we did on the internal partitions and it's what we're going to use again. So click on pattern on a path. What do I want to pattern? Well, I want to pattern features because when we cut these dovetail out, we made two features in the board. So what features do I want to pattern? So select those and it's going to be that one. Now, because we actually mirrored the sketch, it's automatically selected the other face as well, which is cool. Now, what direction do I want the pattern to run? Well, up and down. So I'm just going to select a um, convenient vertical line. That one will do there. And you can see it's now telling me I can pull down and I can pattern down. As I pattern down, you can see it's just sending those dovetails in one direction. There's nothing above the board. If you look here, direction, one direction, that's Y. I want to change that to symmetric. And now you can see it's created dovetails above and below our center point, which is pretty cool. Now, how many dovetails do I want? We've currently got three, one, two, and the one that already exists in the center, three. But we created a parameter, dovetail quantity. So now I can see I've got my five dovetails sliding up and down on both sides of the board. Now, where do I want these dovetails to sit? Well, this is interesting because I want to create a parameter for a measurement that we don't currently know. I want to create a measurement that's the actual width of this board. Well, let me just come, just let me okay this. We'll come back and edit this in a second. Let me just show you something. Okay. I'm just gonna turn everything back on in our master sketch. And zoom out. I want you to cast your mind back. Um, just how garbage those colors are when you see it on the full project. I want to talk about how we made this draw. We put a draw front in and we constrained it from the edges of the drawer opening. Now this top shelf, this yellow, blue, light green, orange, darky blue color thing, this was actually the drawer divider. And that was positioned as a metric, as a calculation from the overall height of the bookcase. To be precise, it was bookcase height divided by eight. And that set this distance here. So I know, therefore, that my drawer is going to be the bookcase height divided by 8. But then don't forget we also put an offset of 0.1 millimeters around this. So the calculation for the height of my drawer front is bookcase height divided by 8 minus 0.1 millimeters. Now I can't be bothered typing that in every single time, so I'm going to create a parameter for that. And it's not a parameter I will change, I just want something that will also calculate. So user parameters, add a parameter, and let's call this draw, oops, a daisy, oh, cracky as well, draw height calculated. And that's just for me so I know. This is the calculated height of the draw. Cool. I want to type in an expression. Well, we know the expression. It's bookcase height divided by 8 minus 0 0.1. And you can see that gives me 156.40, which sounds about right. It's about height on there. Okay. So I've got a parameter that's also calculated. So let's come back in to our draw. I'm just going to isolate the drawer again. And then I'm just going to turn off the fronts and the bits we don't want. And now we can come back in to the thing we're working on here. So I'm going to come back down to our tree. And this part here, path pattern two, small draw side, that's what we're working on. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to edit the feature. And that brings me back to where I was before into that menu. So I've still got my five dovetails here and I just want to make sure that we set the height. Now the distance is what we want to look at. I can now type into here, draw height calculated there. Now you can see straight away that's taken my five dovetails off the board and it would do because we've got everything working from a center point, which is half the board. So I can now divide that by two. And now you can see it's brought my five dovetails in. 
but I've got half a dovetail hanging off the edge of the board. So I want to subtract from that my dovetail um, height, dovetail length, sorry. And that now gives me a fantastic layout. These are all equally set out. They're looking pretty good. They're on the board and I've got this half tail at the top and the bottom of the board. So now when I click OK, dunk, that now cuts those out for me and that is looking pretty fine. Now because we've used parameters again, we can change the rules of the game. So let's go a bit stupid. Let me move this out of the way so you can see it. Okay, let's pretend we're going to change the bookcase height to 2 meters. Now that will automatically resize the, um, the drawers for us. So let's see what happens. Yep, so that's resized the drawer and it's resized the dovetails. Looks quite good to me. Let's make the bookcase a bit wider so this should lengthen the board in this direction and those dovetails should still stay on the end. So let's make that something like 500. Yep, that seems to be pretty good to me. Let's change the stock thickness because that will have an impact. Let's change that to 25. Yep, that seems to work okay as well. Let's make the dovetail length different. Let's bring it down to something more of a fine joinery 10 millimeters away from 20. Yes, that's looking pretty good. Let's have more dovetails. Now remember the dovetail quantity would have to be a uh, odd number because I've got a center point then symmetry around that center point so let's decide to have what nine dovetails now something's gone wrong there because that's not updated to nine so let's come out of that and let's go back into our sketch and see what we've done there edit the feature yeah because I've set the quantity for five I've not used a parameter so let's come in and say that's the dovetail quantity is there okay straight away you can see it's now put the nine dovetails that we were looking for so back into the parameters and check that to be 5 again, should take us back to where we were. So now we've got it, we've got a whole host of dovetails that quite happily rescale as we rescale our project. So we now need to do the same on the other side, so let's bring in the left hand side. Now we can do something quite special here, we've already made that sketch, we sketched it and did all the constraints inside that, so wouldn't it be really cool if we could take that sketch and transfer it to our other piece? Well we can, that command's called project, let's have a look at that. So I want to sketch on this side of the board, the pinky side of this board on the outside, so select that pane. I then want to turn back on the sketch that we made before, which was this one here, the last one that we made and you can see that's just put those sketches in there for me and just to spin that board round you can see those sketches are just here at the end of this. I want to introduce you to a new command create project project. It projects the body silhouette edges work geometries and sketch curves into the active sketch plane. So that will take a sketch on one piece and put it on another piece. Let's collect that. So geometry, what is it I want to project? Well, that's quite easy. It's this sketch here, that line, that line, that line. It's that line, that line, and it's that line. And if I now spin round, you can see that's put that sketch on there for me. Okay, there you go. And as I change my sketch, my parameters on one side, this will change as well. So I'm going to modify to prove the point in change parameters. And I'll just do the obvious one. I'll do dovetail length because that's visual. I'm going to make that 40. Okay. And you can see that all of those have now updated. I'll undo that to bring it back to 20. I can now finish my sketch. I can now come into my extrude, I can select that, and I can select that. I want to extrude to an object, which is going to be the back of the board. Bang, I've now got my dovetails inside this board as well. Don't forget, we wanted blind dovetails on this side as well, so we just need to push the edge of our board back. So we can now come in and collect the push-pull tool, that face that face. Now rather than putting a quantity in here we're going to put the parameter in but you see this little black arrow at the side here that remembers things you've used in the past associated to that command so remember that I've done minus stock thickness divided by six 
Beautiful, I'll have that, thank you. Press return. So that's now given me that offset from the front that's going to make that a blind dotter. You can still see this sketch on this side. I want to get rid of that, well not delete it, just hide it. So come to your sketches, come down and click the eye, turn that off. So now we just want to duplicate this. We've done that before, we did it on this side. So create command, pattern, pattern on a path. I want to create a feature and it's this feature here and that selects both of them. My path is up and down, which is nice. Um, my direction wants to be symmetrical and now I can just grab the arrow and move that to show that that is indeed working. It's now said it's going to give me three, but I don't want three, I want five, or more importantly, the dovetail quantity, and that's put those in there. So my height is going to be dovetail calculated, you can see that goes off the board, divided by two, because I've got half of it, because we're working from the centre of the board, minus the dovetail um, length, and that now puts that in the same position. Okay, that, I now have my dovetails. Beautiful, and we know that everything will be sized. So the final thing is to put my sockets in place, my pins. So bring back in the small drawer front and bring back in the small drawer back. Now this is no harder than using our favorite router tool, Combine. So click on the Combine button. The target body is going to be the front and the tool I want to use, the router, is going to be the uh, panels we've just made. So I want to select that one and I want to select that one. The operation is cut, and do I want to keep the panels? Yeah, it's probably a good idea, and okay. And now what that's done, that's now created the um, blind dovetail sockets and pins on the front board. Coming into the back, do the same thing, into the modify. What do I want to cut into, my target body? Well, I want to cut into the back. What do I want to use as my toolpath? Well, it's the two sides. Do I want to keep them? Yes. And what's my activity? I want to cut. Um, sorry, I seem to have, there you go. I cut, okay. And there you have it. You now have a drawer that's got some beautiful dovetails inside it that we know will completely change as things update. So that's it, that's where I wanted to take it through today, um, that's how you make dovetails. Next episode we're going to make the larger drawer and I'll show you a really neat way of reusing the panels that we've just made so we've not got to reinvent the wheel. See you next time.